Awarding organisations are facing unprecedented change. We're operating in a highly turbulent market. We're highly regulated with a lot of government intervention. That intervention and that interest in itself is one of the drivers. Because we're in a much more competitive environment, we have very demanding customers. And they're looking for new products and new services and innovation from us, both in our products, but also in how we do business with them. Those are typically the key drivers that I've experienced in the three organisations that I've worked with over the last 17 years. In each of the awarding organisations I've worked for, irrespective of the size of the organisation, its market share, the number of employees it has, the typical issues that they faced are the following things. Firstly, an awarding body management system that's outdated. And by that, I mean a system that basically is homegrown and unsupported. Unsupported both in terms of having staff in-house to support, but also being able to find third-party suppliers to support. As a result, where changes have been made, they've been made in a very ad hoc, piecemeal way. And what that means is no intervention or no integration with other systems within those organisations. So, for example, with the finance system, the HR system, systems that are key to doing business with our customers. In addition to that is a lack of understanding of information and the quality of information that we need to extract from those systems. We need good, real-time, up-to-date information and many awarding body systems don't have a single version of the truth that we can access. Other common challenges have been the need to build a business case to convince our boards and our funders that actually investment in IT and starting again effectively is the right thing for the business to do. Running a competitive tendering process, going out to what is a busy but well commoditised marketplace and testing your business requirements. Alongside that, rethinking all of your business processes and your workflows to make sure that those requirements are right for your business of the future. Crucially, run a discovery phase, ideally before you actually go to tender for the solutions. And that is about testing your business requirements. It could involve a potential partner who will test and challenge you. This helps build and retest the business case that you've taken to your investors. Be prepared as part of that discovery phase to have your assumptions challenged. Good questions that you'll be asked are the why questions or the what questions or the how questions. Again, you're constantly revisiting and testing that your business requirements are right for the future version of your business. I've run a number of discovery phases over my time in the awarding body sector. One of the most recent phases was with ProTech in 2016-2017. That was successful because ProTech took the time to understand my organisation. Let's face it, we were going to work together for a long time, so I needed to be confident that they understood us, that they were a good fit, that they understood and they cared about the future of the business. They took a very pragmatic and transparent and open approach to working with us. They were prepared to challenge us, but they also understood that we were making an investment in their product and there were things that they learned from us in terms of research and development and things that they could do to improve their product. As a result of that discovery phase, we were able to award a contract to ProTech for a combination of their IT products, but basically brought a full solution from them. Know and understand the drivers and the reasons for the change you want to make. Be clear on the risks of doing nothing, particularly with your board or those that are going to invest in this digital project. Always manage any change project as that, as a project, not as a day job that you give to other people. It won't happen. Always define your business requirements and be prepared to test and revisit those on a regular basis. Be prepared to be challenged, particularly by the supplier, the partner that you work with to develop this digital project. Run a tender to create a level playing field. It's a crowded market, there are many providers. Be prepared to talk to a number of them and do your homework. 
negotiate. There's always a deal to be done. This is a highly commoditized marketplace and you and your organization will be investing research and development back into the products that you decide to invest in. That comes at a, a price, but you can negotiate. And finally, a successful digital project is always based on partnering. Not a supply relationship, but a long-term relationship with your digital partners. And that means talking, talking, listening, being open, being transparent, and being prepared to be challenged.